Jesus, who was the only man since Melchizedek to possess both anointings in the same tabernacle. Now let me tell you why that is. He is Melchizedek. Don't pull none of that stuff for me. I know Melchizedek wasn't just some old man. I don't know whether I can get to him or not. I'm still studying on him. I've been lost in him for a couple of days. Last night I bet I read over 30 pages. Of, oh, I got blessed. Amen. I don't know whether I can even hold out and give all that tonight because I've got so much of this other to get through. But Jesus comes in and, of course, Caiaphas rips the seamless robe. 
and half, which means he gave up the priesthood. Now you've got to understand something. First of all, no high priest ever sat down in the holy place. Never. They couldn't. The work was never done. There was always sin to atone for, and they never sat down. As a matter of fact, they had bells sewn in the hems of their robes, and they went in with a rope tied around their ankle. And if God received the atoning prayer, then they'd still hear the bells ringing as He walked around. But if they didn't hear no bells ringing, they pulled on that cord, they pulled a dead man out from that holy place. Huh? Why? Because he, the priest had to offer first for his what? For his own sins. And then for the sins of the people. Oh, I don't know about you, but I love you. But I sure don't need you repenting for me. I know what I know how bad I need forgiving. And I don't want nobody else repenting for me. I'll do my own repenting. I know how to get sincere with the Lord. Amen. I mean, I'll go off and pray with you, and you can be my prayer buddy, but I can tell you if I really need to get a hold of God over something, I'm not a hunt no prayer partner. I'm getting over in somewhere by myself. Oh, where nobody ain't going to see me lose control of what's going on, and I'm going to roll, and I'm going to holler, and I'm going to cry, and I'm going to fast, and I'm going to growl and groan and weep between the porch and the altar, and I lay hold of the Lord, folks. I'm telling you right now, we're every man is a priest over his own house now. You don't have to lay it on the altar of another religious shoulder, but you have the authority as the priest in your own situation and in your own home to rise up and take the authority of the Holy Ghost and lay down the law of righteousness and declare that this is the way of the Lord. Hallelujah to God. So you must see that they never sat down. There was nothing to sit down over. There wasn't no rest. And in the time Jesus came into Jerusalem on the scene of time in an earthly ministry, Josephus tells us that the sacrifice was behind six months. Six months worth of sacrifice piled up. They were so behind and so backed up. Of course, David had restored and brought in the worship of, to Jerusalem, had established the law of God on the top of Zion. Solomon built the temple on the top of Zion, or Moriah. And there he established the order of worship. And David restored worship back to Jerusalem. So you're not talking about a little church meeting, camp meeting, Sunday deal. You're talking about every man, I mean, from, for hundreds of miles away, have come to Jerusalem because it's the week of Passover. They have come for the festivity. They have come for the worship. They have come for the singing. They have come for the dancing. Them Hebrews dance. But I'll tell you what they come for most. They come for that day of atonement. Oh, hallelujah. Whatever sin they have would be wiped away clean for another year. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something, beloved saints of God. When you come to Jesus, you didn't just come for the feel good of it. You didn't just come because you want to shake the preacher's hand. You didn't just come because somebody told you to. You didn't just come because the music was good. You didn't just come because the singing was good. You didn't even come to hear the preacher preach. You came that you may lay your sins huh? on the atonement altar and have God say to you, you're justified. You're forgiven. I've wiped it clean again. Oh, hallelujah. Even the old people that didn't know Jesus had enough sense to know that there was only one pardon for sin, and that was the blood of the Lamb. For when Moses went through that temple, he had blood in his hand, and he sprinkled blood on everything that was in that temple. He sprinkled the altar. He sprinkled the mercy seat. He sprinkled the lampstand. If you went in there, that gold furnishing uh, that would be beautiful and highly polished in most churches uh, was smeared all over with the blood of a spotless lamb. And all things are purged by the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. Oh, there's power in the blood. When I see the blood, oh, the blood of Jesus, nothing but the blood. 